we have our UA0036-64 uh, pendant temp event logger connected to our optic base station. We have Hoboware, the free version, open here. Uh, the pendants are also compatible with the waterproof shuttle. However, to use the shuttle, you would need Hoboware Pro. So we have this device connected. These are the loggers that are included in the RG3, the standalone data logging rain gauge, and its metric equivalent, the RG3M. So we're going to go into the launch screen and show you how to configure this device. We go to device, launch, and we're in our, our launch window. For veterans of uh, previous videos, this should look familiar to you. Again, by default, when you buy a new logger, you uh, the name of the deployment is the serial number. We suggest putting in a descriptive name there when you launch the device for your deployment be it its location or whatever you whatever makes sense to you this will be your file name when you read out the data it will be the file the name and dot hobo is the extension below that is the the serial number of the device we count the number of deployments how many times the logger has been launched this logger has been launched nine previous times this is the 10th deployment there's no limit to the number of deployments we just keep track of them an indication of our current battery level. If we click on status, we will get the, a little more information about the device, including the firmware version that's installed, information about the last time it was deployed, and it goes out and it queries its internal sensors. This has a temperature sensor inside. It also counts these uh, events or contact closures. The device has a cable on the end with two wires. Every time the wires touch, that's considered an event. Uh, the logger events are just count. They're just counts. They're just counted. They're not. Um, you don't get the duration of how long that was closed for. Um, if you think about how a tipping bucket rain gauge works, it's just a temporary um, switch closure that indicates one tip of the bucket, and that equates to a certain amount of rain or a certain volume of water. Moving down through, this particular logger has a temperature sensor inside of it. If you want to measure temperature, it's suggested that you exteriorize the logger from the rain bucket, if this is being used in a, in a, uh, in a data logging rain gauge. Otherwise, it could be uh, reading false highs because of the sun uh, beating on, the, on the, um, the rain gauge. And there's more information about how to do that in the manual. Below that, you can see this is the event channel from the factory. It the, the units are measurement. Uh, the measurement is units. So if you were going to deploy this to monitor rainfall, you may want to call this rainfall or something like that. You can give it another label again. You have a measurement, a label, and then this is where you can put in your increment. So. The RG3, the US version of the rain gauge, each tip represents one one hundredth of an inch of rain. Here you can put in inches. If this was an RG3M, it's calibrated so each tip is 0.2 millimeters of rain. And again, this is independent of your units that you selected up here in your global configuration for either US or SI. You have the ability to apply filters. Filters, uh, if you haven't seen any of our other videos, filters are calculated by Hoboware when you read out the data. They're not recorded in the logger. Hoboware will look at your interval data and apply the filter the, requ uh, the desired filter, depending on how you, what criteria you, you choose. In this case, you can select for temperature, the temperature channel. You can select maximum, minimum, or average over a range of measured or log data points. So, for example, if you were logging temperature every five minutes and you select maximum temperature in a day, Hoboware, when you read out the data, will look at each day's worth of five-minute intervals of data and determine the maximum temperature and record that. So you will have one, one data point for each day that represents the maximum temperature that it saw, it saw at those five-minute uh, intervals. For the rainfall channel, you can select a filter to allow Hoboware to uh, count 
the cumulative sum of the rainfall in each day, each hour, each multiple day. Uh, that's very helpful for a lot of applications. You can pr you can create that now, or you can take the raw data, the raw rainfall data, and then apply a filter afterwards after you read the data out. So we're going to create this filter and say done. Now back in our launch screen, we have a one in parentheses that's telling us we have a filter created. We do have an interval, a logging interval available because we have the temperature uh, channel selected. If we deselect this, if we're just using this as a rain, uh, rainfall sensor, you notice that the logging interval becomes grayed out and we can't change it. That's because the event channel on this logger is scanning for events every second. That's a, that's a, um, a preset scanning rate that cannot be changed. So if you set it for rainfall only, or again, if, if maybe you'd be using this to count some other type of events, which is you can definitely use it for any type of event you want, but don't select temperature, it will scan for those event changes once a second. That's the fastest it will, it will go. And again, you see here, calculated logging duration is really uh, event dependent. It depends on how many events you get. If we select temperature again, this is where we can put in the interval. And at a one minute, what this is saying, a one minute interval, the logger will log for 36.2 days before the memory fills and the logger stops logging. This logger will stop logging when the memory fills up. We have several different common intervals to choose from, or you can put in a custom interval anywhere between once a second to once every 18 hours, anywhere in between. Let's set a uh, 10 minute logging interval again. So here, if we're measuring temperature and rainfall at a 10 minute interval, the logger will log for 362.1 days. Keep in mind when you have a logging interval um, selected, that's only for the temperature channel. It's not for the event channel. The event channel is scanning once a second. They're independent of each other. So with a 10 minute logging interval, you're not going to miss events in between those intervals because they, they log independently of each other. If you decide to start logging now, you notice there's a clock incrementing right here. The logger will, you click start, the logger will begin logging now and Hoboware will use this time from your computer clock as the beginning of your data file. If your computer clock is wrong, your data file time will be wrong. If you're using a shuttle, a waterproof shuttle, uh, the waterproof shuttle has a clock in it. If you're using the shuttle by itself, that shuttle clock needs to be synchronized to your computer clock in order for it to correctly write uh, the date and time, the correct date and time, into your loggers when you're launching them in the field. Otherwise, your dates and times will be wrong in your data. There is a... Um, there's a good explanation of how that works in the shuttle manual, and there's also a waterproof shuttle video that you should watch if you're not familiar with how that works. If we select at interval, watch what happens to our little clock here. At a 10-minute interval, if we say at interval, it goes to the next 10-minute interval, so in this case, 420. So if we click on delayed start, it will wait to start logging until 420. The next interval will be at 430, 440, etc. We can also set the logger to start at a future time and date, uh, up to six months in advance. This is a great way to synchronize multiple loggers to the same starting time. So you can set all your loggers to start at the same time sometime in the future, take them out in the field, get them located, and leave them alone, and they'll all start at the same time. This logger also supports a trigger start. We call it coupler start here. The way that works, that coupler that you have it plugged into in the base station or the shuttle, the black thing with the arm on it, there's a magnet in there. And uh, so what you, what you would do is if you select coupler start, you remove the logger from this coupler. Once the coupler start is completed, remove it from the coupler, take the coupler off your base station or shuttle, take the coupler out in the field with you with your data loggers, and when you're ready to do a coupler start, slide the coupler only onto the logger, leave it there for three seconds, pull it off, 
and the magnet on the coupler will close the little switch inside that logger and cause the logger to begin logging.